I'll handle this. Ready to go! I will not falter again! Ready? Phantom Ray! Rest in peace. our guests. Round and round! Up you go! Let the party begin! I do hope you enjoy yourself! Brace yourself! Blinding light, gather in my blade! I always save my earth! This is the power of the Soaring Phoenix! Golden seal etched deep in my soul. Fear with the fury of the goddess! The 
make you feel tingly? All right, let's do this. For the big finish, Lethal Crusade! Today, damn it. 
I'm ready. Show me you can withstand this! Time to paint this town red. Gotcha! Up you go! <laughs> Not a bad trick, huh? Eat this! It's the last call. Sinners! Live away! For real? Let's go! Thanks. 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 My turn. My apologies. Leave everything to me. I am bound by my chains no longer. <laughs> I'm sorry. Your fate is now sealed. You cannot escape death's embrace! I'll handle this. Turn. You got this. Leave it to me. This is it. You failed your inspection. One more. This is the end. Justice is bullet. Take this! 
It's my turn. Switch with me. <laughs> Got it. Let's go. Ha! Yeah. Now. An opening. Go. An opening. opening. Unforgivable. My, My turn. turn. Got it. <laughs> It's my, my turn! turn.
What the? I won't let you! Instructor! Rain! It's okay! I got him! Million! Consciousness the Ebba Knight's logic system gained after being influenced by humanity. It was consumed by malice, manipulated its creators, the gnomes, and spread its curse across the world. In other words, this thing is humanity's creation. The very concept of strife drove its every act, and for better or for worse, led us to where we are now. War forced us to innovate. Conflict forced us to evolve. In leading us to such power and knowledge, I suppose you're almost like a god. Exactly. A god with power beyond compare! Become my awakener, and you too can... Sorry. I'll pass. This is the beginning of a new age. An age ruled by humanity. We're going to accept responsibility for our past. The actions that created you. And by doing so, we'll rise to even greater heights. Farewell, Ishmelga. I'm not sure if you even have a soul, but I hope you find your way to Adios. Finally done it, Reen! Yeah. Somehow. To be honest, it feels a little strange talking to you like this. Father and son. Oh, does it now? Who do you think held you in his arms when you were but an infant? I do believe I'm starting to feel a bit of regret over leaving you all to Teo. Well, to be fair, I've known him as my dad for quite a bit longer. But I'm glad I was able to learn your true intentions. To meet the real you. There's no doubt in my mind that we're father and son. We kind of share a few of the same tendencies, after all. Oh, such as our penchant for self-sacrifice, perhaps. I can't argue with you on that point. But unlike me, you still have a long life ahead of you. Don't throw it away for others. Use it to protect them, just as they would you. And most importantly, never give up, no matter what. 
Surely these lessons were at the core of your master's teachings. Ah. <sighs> I see. I understand now. All right? I'll take those words to heart. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. You have to go now, don't you? I do. My time here has nearly run out. I'll forever be grateful we had this chance. To finally meet as father and son. Yeah. Me too. As for Milium, Claire, Lecter, and Rufus, my loyal children of blood and iron, please tell them I'm sorry. Now farewell, my dear son. Goodbye, Dad. Instructor Reen. So it's over then? Yeah. I guess the society's making a break for it. Yes. And it seems the Great Twilight has dissipated as well. <sighs> That's not the end of our problems, though. Right. The Imperial Army and the Mule Mirage forces will likely begin advancing on each other soon. In fact, Supreme Commander Van Dyke and Lieutenant General Bright may have already taken action. Uh, Wayne, your hair! How about that? It must be a sign I'm free of the curse. So that means you're no longer the sacrifice. I'm... so relieved. <laughs> Black hair really does suit you better, Instructor. <gasps> you're back to normal now. Good thing, too. I was getting tired of you stealing my look. Glad I got to see the real you one last time. That's right. Now that the Great Twilight's over... I knew it was coming, but... Come on now. I told you I was running on borrowed time anyway. So, how about you guys send me off with some smiles this time around? <laughs> that goes for me too. Milium? What do you mean? It's like I said, I was a weapon created just for the rivalries. Now that the ritual's done, I'm fading away with it. So it's time for me to say goodbye. Milium. No! Please! <laughs> what? Why? Damn it! This is not a fate you need accept. What? 
Falimar? Or Dean? Join me, my siblings. Let us gather together one final time. Very well. Understood. The Divine Knights? Perhaps they return due to the Great One's defeat. Precisely. It feels as if we are awakened at last from a long, harrowing dream. The rivalry of the Seven is complete, and the curse of the Great One is no more. The Ebon Knight has left our ranks, but perhaps that is for the best. Incredible. Seeing them all together, they're magnificent. It would seem all the conditions have now been met. Father! So you were an immortal too, huh? Yes. I became one as a result of being taken over by the Chief of the Gnomes. I'm so sorry, my dear Elisa. We were finally able to talk for the first time in years. And now I must leave you again. But before I do, allow me to give you a gift. The fruit of my long years of research. Divine Knights, I stand before you now as Chief of the Kin of Earth and implore you. Run the Sacrament Program of Lost Zem, the Septarian of Earth. Rematerialize the sword from its concept form and convert all remaining energy to biomass to create a vessel. Huh? Huh? Is this... Precisely, Emma, dear. What we're doing now is the very same act the mages sought to perform back in the Dark Ages. Something normally impossible. But now that we have the power of two Septarians, even miracles are within our grasp. I never dreamed I would see the day when this would be possible. You've impressed me, Black Alberic. No, Franz Reinford. <laughs> All I've done is lay the groundwork. Now I need your help. With pleasure. Divine Knights, I stand before you now as Elder of the Kin of Fire and implore you. Run the sacrament program of Arc Rouge, the Septarian of Fire! Stabilize the soul that resides in the sword, and affix the other to its reconstructed vessel! Right, very well, Indeed. understood. Of course. How is this possible? The Septarians of Fire and Earth being used in tandem. It feels so warm. Unbelievable. Kia, yeah. is this like... Yeah. It's like a super magnified version of the power I used to heal Shizuku. What the hell was that? Man, why are you guys trying to upstage me? I was looking forward to making my big dramatic exit even better than last time. What gives? Why are you all staring at me like that? Have I got something on my... But how? I was fading away. I felt it. And my hair, too. My body feels... whole again. Bro... Your complexion. The color of your hair. You look like yourself again. We did it! But... Milliam... She's still... 
This is a real miracle, huh? But man, I'm so tired all of a sudden. Sorry, just gotta take a little nap. Hey, Milliam! It's okay. I think she's just fallen asleep. Being permanently materialized into our world must have taken a lot out of her. Hey! Reen! Everyone. Damn, that's some crowd! I'm glad to see it was a success. Valimar, Ordeen, you're all... We have used up the remaining power of the Septarians for one final miracle. This will be the one and only time such an act will be permitted. Thanks. Partner. Uh, hold on. If Crow can come back, you should be able to as well, right, Father? I'm afraid not. The chances of success are higher the less time a person has spent as an immortal. I've been like this for ten years. This same method would not be able to revive me. No! My lady... Franz... George, it may be too late for me, but you still have a chance to atone. Erebonia will need skilled engineers to rebuild, and I know you can fill that role in my stead. I'll do you proud. Sharon, I am deeply grateful for the way you've watched over my family in my absence. I hope that you will continue to care for my wife, daughter, and father-in-law in the future. I... Of course. I promise to serve the Reinford family for as long as I'm wanted. So this is how you choose to leave us, my foolish disciple. I'm sorry. Please look after yourself, Professor. And my dear Elisa, I'm sorry our time together was so short, but what little we had was the happiest of my life. Please, take care. Tell your mother I love her, and give your grandfather my regards. I will. Thank you for everything. I love you, Father! Valmar. Is this goodbye? Damn. So you guys are really gonna leave after all we've been through together. Our sole purpose was to contain the power of the Great One. With said duty fulfilled, our time in this world is over. <sighs> Stand tall, my Awakener, son of my former Awakener. And my true friend. It was my privilege to stand by your side through all of your struggles and moments of joy. Machine though I may be, seeing you grow and progress warmed my heart. Reen, I am proud of the man you have become. It was an honor to have been your Awakener. Thank you for everything, my friend. I'll never forget you. Oh yes, Reem, Yusus, Altina. One more thing. When you find a moment, pay the workshop's biological research wing a visit. Be sure to bring the sword with you. So long.
They really were something else. They did so much for us. Yes. And Franz's final words. It seems everything worked out for the best. I imagine His Excellency would be pleased. Man, can you believe that guy? Taking the villain role and actually seeing it all the way through to the end. Guess that makes him a better dad to us Ironbloods than I gave him credit for. Uh, maybe, deep down, that's why I never took my shot at getting revenge. Then again, since we survived, we gotta take responsibility for everything he did. Indeed. Though I imagine you won't face too harsh a sentence. <laughs> Especially since you still have a promise to keep to Princess Claudia. What? You're kidding me, right? You RMP guys will catch a little flack, sure. But it's the intelligence division that'll end up with a boot up our at. Neither of you will be let off so easily. After all, the Empire will need your talents to be rebuilt. Just think of the chaos that will ensue as a result of halting Operation Jormungand so suddenly. Ceasefire negotiations will need to be held. Reparations will need to be made. Lifting the curse will do little on its own. The Empire as we know it may well collapse under the enormity of its sins. Which is why we'll need both the Intelligence Division and the RMP to maintain order. Ah. Uh. <laughs> well, when you put it like that... I will be the one to bear the responsibility for His Excellency's actions. It is the best way we can go about quelling the unrest in Erebonia and solving the issue of Crossbell all at once. I can think of no better way for us Ironbloods to honor him. Understood. Sheesh, <laughs> fine. Farewell, Your Excellency, and thank you for everything. So long, old man. Keep an eye on me from Gehenna, will ya? <sighs> hey, Princey boy. If you want to take it back, now's your last chance. Looks to me like you kind of just jump right in without thinking it over. Sure, Ouroboros doesn't turn anyone away, but it's a big decision, you know? <laughs> I've already come this far. I may as well see it through. If I stayed in Erebonia, I wouldn't face any consequences. They wouldn't imprison the Crown Prince, after all. At worst, I might be disinherited, and then Alfin or Oliver would need to bear my burdens. As things are, it would be best for me to simply disappear from the Empire. And given recent events, you seem a bit short-staffed at the moment. I think I may be able to assist you. If I were to be accepted as an enforcer, I would have the freedom to do whatever I please, correct? I could use that freedom to finally see the world outside of Erebonia. Just like Olivert. <laughs> wow, guess you actually gave it some thought after all. Glad to see you finally grew a pair. Alright then, come with me. We can take the Beowulf. And hey, I can introduce you to Daddy while we're there! The War God? You're going to introduce me to him... You mean, as your... <sighs> Wait. No, this is surely we're talking about. Very well. Lead the way. Farewell, Alfin, Oliver. You as well, Kurt and Reen. Goodbye to all of you.
After everything that happened, over half a year passed in the blink of an eye. With the end of the Great Twilight, an armistice was declared on the second day of the Great War. Supreme Commander Van Dyke and Lieutenant General Bright worked together to minimize casualties during the negotiations. Meanwhile, the media reported that Emperor Eugen would return to the throne after recovering from his surgery. This was broadcast around the world, in tandem with the declaration that Calvert played no part in the assassination attempt. However, the truth only ended up plunging the Empire into greater turmoil and spurred a storm of criticism from other countries. Amid the chaos, Governor Regnitz stepped in to try to bring the situation under control. He issued the order for Erebonian troops to immediately return to the Empire. Many feared that Calvert might take this opportunity to strike back, but such fears proved to be unfounded. I can only assume it was because Calvert didn't want to take any chances against the far stronger Erebonian army. For the people of Erebonia, it was as if they had woken up from a nightmare. On the other hand, the people of Calvert began to criticize the Empire all the more fiercely. Fortunately, due to the evacuation efforts on the first day of the war, civilian casualties were kept to a minimum. President Brocksmith, nearing the end of his term, made careful efforts to placate his citizens. However, he found himself under serious pressure from the new president-elect and was made to demand astronomical reparations from the Empire. The provisional government in Erebonia, led by Governor Regnitz, was forced to negotiate. As part of the negotiations, he demanded that Calvert pledge to not invade Crossbell. Liberal, Remiferia, and the holy city of Arteria agreed, and jointly mounted pressure on the Republic to keep its troops within its borders. Reparations were eventually made, mostly funded by the Erebonian government, the Imperial family, the Reinfurt group, and House Cayenne. As the Imperial army withdrew from Crossbell, discussions began between the Empire and Speaker McDowell. But the Governor General's personal defense force refused to stand down and took control of the city themselves. Rufus condemned their actions from prison, but they refused to back down, and the threat of a Calvardian invasion began to loom. So, the Crossbell Guardian Force, formerly the Crossbell Military Police, worked with the citizens to devise a solution. And on the day of Arkansas's star-studded comeback performance, the Governor General's Defense Force was quickly subdued by citizen volunteers, and Crossbell was free once more. At the heart of the operation were the officers of the Special Support Section, saving their country yet again. While foreign affairs were steadily heading in the right direction, Erebonia's domestic issues showed no signs of stopping. With the news of Chancellor Osborne's death, the nobles he had kept in check scrambled to reclaim their former power. Class warfare broke out once more, and though the Imperial family tried to restore order, rumors of Prince Cedric's role in the Chancellor's warmongering caused their pleas to fall on deaf ears. The Crown Prince's mysterious disappearance only put them in a more difficult position. Just when things seemed their worst, Princess Alfin and the newly returned Prince Olivert engaged the public directly and sincerely. As a result, the Imperial family slowly started to win back the people's trust the continent over. Meanwhile, news of Crossbell's liberation stirred talk of independence in Jirai and North Ambria. Some argued, however, that the ten years Jirai had spent as an SEZ had bolstered its economy and reduced poverty. The issue is still hotly debated, and those in charge are monitoring the situation carefully for fear of more conflict igniting. Though Chancellor Osborne's right-hand man, Governor General Rufus Alberea, was apprehended, Majors Lecter Arundel and Claire Revelt managed to avoid arrest. Not only that, 
but they remained at the Intelligence Division and the RMP, respectively, focusing their efforts on restoring order to their country. That said, both groups lost their position as government organizations and underwent extensive restructuring. The Bracer Guild regained its former status in the Empire, and for the first time in five years, all its branches were reopened. High-ranking Bracers from all over the continent helped to combat disorder and unrest within the Empire, according to certain classified information from the Guild. Prince Cedric, thought to be missing, had in fact become a member of Ouroboros. There are even rumors that he was made an enforcer, but that remains unverified. Meanwhile, after tirelessly aiding the other great houses, Governor Regnitz, and the Government Accountability Inspectorate for months, Acting Duke Eusis Alborea rejoined his allies for a journey to a certain place. Each of his friends had been busy restoring peace to their country in their own way. But now, with the embers of war finally cooled, they were able to meet once more. A backup OZ-74 unit. So your dad prepared this, Elisa? That's right. He must have worked on it in the brief moments when he was himself. It couldn't have been an easy secret to keep from the Ebon Knight. Your father was a great man. Damn right. Can't be easy fooling someone who's in your head. For real. It seems like the mana inside is stable. And it should be easy to work with such a pure soul as hers. We'll be right here to help whenever you're ready. Go ahead, Eusis. <laughs> hmm. Now, bring out the sword. Right. Altina, you should help too. Don't worry. I know it'll turn out just fine. <laughs> That's right, Allie. Be brave. I will. Everything's staple. This should work. Adios, please. Now'd be the time for a miracle. I'm sure we've got one or two left, right? If you're listening out there, these kids need you. The sword. of a long story. <laughs> so much happened while you were asleep. But before we get to all that... <clears throat> Welcome back, 
million. million.